Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and fans of Stratomatic Baseball. It's me, Sportsman Z, and I'm here today. I'm going to talk about two of my Stratomatic teams, progress reports, updates on two of my teams. One, as you can see on the screen, is my Stratomatic 365 uh, season and team, which I had done a video on earlier Um and I will have in the um, on the end screen so that you can click on that if you wanted to get the background on it. But I am doing Strat 365 this year. And I do have a team, and it is almost at midseason. And I will also be talking about my Elmwood team, who I had told you we were going to have our draft. And we did have our draft, and I will be updating you on how that went for my Providence Grays, the Providence Grays, as I've talked about many times. Um, so first, let's talk about my 365 team. Uh, right now, I am on the front office page, and you can see if you look right below where I'm talking, that is my division. That's my four-team division, and you can see I am currently third, and I am 39 and 36. Now, if I had done this video yesterday it would have been a much better story because i had come off um yesterday i had won five of my last six games and i was 39 and 33 at that time and i was tied i was in a three-way tie for first place in the division and then i got swept so let's take a look at that situation uh you can see right over here uh, on the left-hand side, the previous games up here, I uh, lost three games to the, um, let's see, who, the, the Goonies. The Goonies swept me. The first game was a decent game. I lost four to two. But the second two games, the second game and the third game, I got blown out. I was blown off the ball. So, yeah, the Goonies just took me down. So you can see I'm 39 and 36, and we have a situation where, um, let me hear, let me put myself over here now to talk. Um, we have a situation where I am playing the Dexter Morgans tonight. I am the Maryland Crabbers, of course. Uh, I think I discussed that in my previous video. I didn't change my name. So I'm playing the Dexter Morgans tonight. The Dexter Morgans are 33 and 42. So I'm hoping to have a good outing tonight, um, maybe two out of three, hopefully three out of three, because, man, that sweep was a killer. So in the first game, I'm going to have uh, Jose DeLeon going up against uh, Jeff Zahn. And by the way, in case I hadn't mentioned this, but I'm sure I mentioned it in the first video about this, this is a back to the 80s 365 league. Uh, what it basically is is players from the 80s, and there, for every player, there are five possible cards that are being used. You don't know for sure which card is being used, and that isn't revealed until the season is over. So nobody really knows which card for the player is being used. Some have, some players have really bad cards, and some have, uh, and also a good card or two, and so you don't know which one you're getting for the player. Anyway, I'm going to have DeLeon going up against. Um, against Jeff Zahn in game one. You can see DeLeon on the year, for me, is 4-7 and seven with a 362 earned run average. Game two, I'm going to have Roger the Rocket Clemens going up against Don Sutton. And for me, Clemens is 8-6 uh, and six with a 296 earned run average on the year. And then in the last game, we're going to have Bly Levin going up against Ron Guidry, Louisiana Lightning. And the um, and uh, Bly Levin on the year is nine and seven for me with a 394 earned run average. And so you look at my lineup really quick. This is my lineup versus left-handed batters. Uh, Vince Coleman, who is hitting 269 versus lefties. Tommy Hur, who's hitting 239. Um, Henderson, who is hitting 167. This is Ricky Henderson hitting 167 against lefties. Kind of odd, but. He does have a 327 on base percentage and a 
262 sluggish. So really, he's not that impressive at all. Um, then you got Buddy Bell in the fourth spot, hitting 338. Then you've got Pete Dinkavilia, the Texas Ranger, Pete Dinkavilia, hitting 390 against lefties. And then Craig Reynolds is my shortstop, mainly because uh, I still have Dick Schofield on the uh, on the uh, on the mend. He's actually injured. He's out with an injury. Um, Milt Thompson is going to play right field, and then Jody Davis at catcher, and Drees and Dan Dreesen at first base, hitting two twenty nine. He is the last hitter in the lineup because against lefties, he was much worse than against righties. My lineup against righties is going to be Coleman in right. Hitting 264 against righties. Dreesen moves all the way up to second against righties because he hits them much better. He's hitting 275 with a 359 on base percentage. Then Tommy Herr hitting 280. Bell at 306. Gross, Wayne Gross, the DH, 241. Uh, Tim Flannery at short, 341, but he's a part time player and he's playing again only because Dick Schofield's on the mend. And then Ricky Henderson hitting 258, doing much better against righties. And then Milt Thompson in center and Davis at catcher. So that's what we're looking at. I'm hoping for two out of three tonight. Uh, we will just take a quick look at the uh, roster so you guys can see the uh, stats. Here's my pitching staff and how everybody on the pitching staff is doing overall. I'll give you a quick few seconds to check these guys out um and also there's an 80 million dollar salary cap in the league Cle uh, clemens and uh, blylevin eat up quite a bit of that and so does quisenberry quisenberry reliever out there uh, my ace reliever 15 saves for him and then here are what the batters are doing. Here's the batters I have and what they're doing on the year overall. Now, these statistics are all, like, on the year for both against righties and lefties combined. Um, and you can see, uh, yeah, you, you can just take a look, peruse that. Uh, Incavilia having a great year. You can see 367 for me, um, but he was on another team, and a guy cut him, and I picked him up. Um, and that's only because he's batting almost exclusively against um, left-handed uh, pitchers. So those are the statistics. And then we'll look really quick at my league and the standings. I think the way this league works is the uh, it's the winner of every division and then the next best team, the next best one team, and that, that's the four teams that make the playoffs. Um, obviously I'm still in this. There's more than a half, a, just over a half a season left to play. So I'm still alive easily. Uh, but the team, I mean, it takes, it's like it t we take two steps backward or forward and then one step back. We were five and one in our last six, and then we got swept. And that seems to happen. It's like, I'm, I'm heading up, I'm on my way. And then something knocks us back and keeps us you know, right in this like limbo just above 500 and not really good enough to capture the, uh, the, the division. Um, I could sign other players, but as the season progresses, you lose a bigger and bigger chunk of the salary of the player that you cut. So if they made, you know, if they were making, um, $5 million and you lose 10% of that, that's quite a bit of money to lose when you cut them. And then you can't, that means you basically you can't sign a guy that's a $5 million player. You have to f sign a guy that's, you know, like a four point whatever million dollar player. Um, me and math, not really good. So there you go. That's what we're looking at. I, I mean, the team is good. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with it. You're in a competitive league against guys that keep signing players and cutting players and signing players and cutting players. And so, you know. I mean, for me to be even over 500, I'll take it. In fact, my buddy Tom Bunch, you can see, is the worst team in the league right now. He's 29 and 46. So that's my uh, 365 team. Let me take a drink of water here. 
And with that, we're going to take a look at the Providence Grays draft. So let me go down here. Oh, I guess we can't do that. Well, we can. Uh, there we are. So here's my, my the uh, Strat draft uh, opening page. And I will log into it. And here is our main draft page, but we're not going to look at that right now because, um, well, we're not. What I want to look at is my office, or no, first let's look at my draft. Let's go to draft views and um, my draft. Here are the players that I drafted onto our team this year. My number one overall draft pick was the Justin Verlander. Probably the best pitching card in the set, I'm hoping. And uh, he should, I mean, he should pitch very well for me. Um, my uh, second pick, I don't remember who, I think that was, uh, I th actually, I think that was Joey Manessis. Joey Manessis of the Nationals had a great card. Now, he can't play all year for me. As you can see, he only has 222 at-bats. So he will only be able to play 222 at bats, roughly 50 games. Uh, my plan for him is to start the season with him in my minor leagues and not on my active roster so that I can see how I can do without him. And then, you know, you bring him up later in the year. If I bring him up with 50 games left, it's like I made a trade for a great player, even though I didn't give up anything to get him because he was already on my roster. So you can take a look here to the guys that I've got. i got some really good players. Jason Adam was an awesome reliever, has a great card. Um, it's got a little bit of a White Sox flavor to it, as you might expect. You know, I got Elvis Andrus. I uh, got uh, Sebe, Sebe Savala, signed him. I um, actually reacquired Adam Engel. I had him last year on my team had to cut him because he just wasn't going to make the 20 man but when we went back and we were drafting again I said you know what he's a good defensive outfielder maybe he can hit a little better this year who knows but um, yeah I got him and then Lurie Garcia now I really I got him I kind of like him but you know and in the end I'm a White Sox fan but I love guys that can play everywhere anyone that can play five six seven positions Love guys like that because you can put them on your active 26 man roster, and um, you know, and that allows you to carry like a, a, an exclusive, like third catcher or an exclusive guy that only plays third or only plays first because you got that jack of all trades and master of none that can go into anywhere whenever there's an injury. Um, I got Alex Call, another Nationals guy. Um, Hoping for big things from him. You can see some of the relievers I got, some of the guys, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tyler Wade, another guy that can play everywhere. Love him. Anyone that can play everywhere. Love those guys. So let's go back to home, and then let's go look at now. Let's go look at my team, my office, uh, my roster. So this is my, this is my uh, roster. This is my 40-man my 40, 40 roster here. Although you can't see all of it all at once. So you know Zebby Zavala is down there. You got Taylor Ward, who I had coming into the year. You got Tyler Wade. So let's go down. And then you got Verlander. So let's look at the top 36 because you can see all of the top 36. I've got um, Eloy Jimenez and Joe Jimenez, the Jimenez brothers. Um Kiner Falefa, Isaiah Kiner Falefa is going to be, he's kind of going to be a, like a third and shortstop backup because I'm going to have Andrus at short and I'm going to play Longoria. Evan Longoria will be my starting third baseman. He hits uh, lefties actually very well and he's good defensively at third. Another guy, a backup that plays a lot of places, Zach McKinstry. I got Danny Mendick. Danny Mendick is another White Sox guy. Like I said, it's got a big White Sox flavor to it. Um, Scott Tanner. Uh, Pete, I can't pronounce his last name. Strzeskalki. 
I don't know. But, uh, you know, Michael Taylor, Michael Taylor, great defensive center fielder. Can hit a little bit, but not he's not great at hitting. Um, Alec Baum, you got the Alec Baum man. Uh, hoping for big things from him this year in real life for Philadelphia because I've got him for quite a few years. So anyway, that is my team. We're going to start probably around the time that Major League Baseball really starts. So up until then, you spend your time doing sims, deciding if you've got any holes, trading for the holes to fill the holes. And uh, we'll see what happens with, uh, with all of that. So what do you guys think about this team? Think I got a team now, finally, that can make the playoffs? Actually, my commissioner, who is eternally pessimistic about my teams every single year, says that it would be hard to mess this up. He thinks I'm definitely going to the playoffs. And uh, several other guys have said this was like the best draft they've ever seen me have. Um, I would be hard-pressed to disagree with him. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Below. Give me a thumbs up. Where is my thumb? There it is. Give me a thumbs up for the video. But that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I am signing off.